Yeah. So far, uh, we have discussed about um, some important aspects of photochemistry. Um, in the coming classes, we will be discussing more about pericyclic reactions. Uh, we will concentrating some. We will concentrate on some important reactions. Okay. So, so <coughs> this half we will be concentrating more on. cyclic reactions just I will get to some nice introduction of pericyclic reactions see um, this pericyclic uh, like uh, early times people thought that reactions go by a radical or it goes by ionic intermediates like cation or anionic. They were, uh, they were not up, uh, thinking about uh, reactions where there is no intermediates. Okay? So, they come across certain reactions which were not affected by solvent, which were not affected by pH and after a lot of struggle, they were not able to isolate any type of intermediates. So, this type of reactions, they call them as non-mechanism reactions, they just call them as a non-mechanism reaction. But um, you are after Woodward, he was working on uh, the steroid chemistries. So, he found out or he absorbed an important aspect. Uh, when you take steroids and if you heat it, you get a nice selective stereoisomer. But once you take the same chemistry and do it in light, he absorbed different isomer with selectivity in that. So, that was a very important observation um, seen by Woodward. So, what he did that Woodward as well as Hoffman you heard about Hoffman. Okay? Hoffman is a great theoretician and he was working on quantum. So, Woodward and Hoffman then came together, formulated a rule called as Woodward Hoffman rule, which decides the stereochemistry of this reactions and they coined them as most like a pericyclic reactions. Okay? At the same time, you heard about Foucault. Right? He was also contributing a lot on this uh, understanding about this pericyclic reactions. I think in the year 1965, Woodward and Foucault, they shared Nobel Prize in chemistry okay, for this uh, uh, pericyclic reactions. Okay. The, the pericyclic reactions have a very good important utility in synthetic chemistry, okay, like your CC bond, you can do that. What is the famous reactions in pericyclic where you do CC bond formation? Cycladition, your dill sudder reactions. Okay. You can do many important synthetic applications using dill sudder reactions. There were Ean reactions, you have Claisen rearrangement, scope rearrangement. So, they started having more important in organic chemistry. Okay. So, that is a sort of introduction to pericyclic reactions. Okay? Um, now, we will see that how we can define this pericyclic reactions. Okay? How we can define this pericyclic reaction? Normally, I, I am taking a simple reaction which you have known. Okay? take this you can get this product right see um, if you are not having an idea of pericyclic uh, let me assume that uh, um, this reaction goes by sort of if I can write that reaction goes by radical, okay, if, I, if I assume, okay. it is not true if I assume, 
then I can think about making the same product, right. I can call this as my intermediate or same reaction I can assume in other way also. So, you can see, I can see the, uh, I can feel this reaction like this, but the interesting part of this reaction is what? This reaction is more like an intermediate reaction, it is a stepwise mechanism, okay. If you want to write a energy profile for this reaction, how you can draw an energy profile, basically I have my reaction coordinate here, I have my energy, okay. If I want to draw my energy profile, right, my reactant and my product, okay, and this is will be my intermediate. intermediate, okay. So, you say this reaction like stepwise mechanism which goes by a type of intermediate. In other hand, if I take the same reaction. say that I so I call this as a transition state okay because it is not an intermediate which I can isolate. So, how you can think about the energy profile? Yeah. So, it will be I draw my reaction coordinate with my energy R, I have my P, and this will be my so called transition state, right. See, you have a free, so you can think about a stepwise mechanism where you have an energy profile with an intermediate in that, and you think about a reaction which goes by a uh, like without a radical intermediate, goes to a transition state, uh, you end up energy profile like this. So, with this, can we define now pericyclic reaction with this idea? The first thing comes in your mind is what? Your bond breaking as well as your bond making process, right. Your bond breaking and bond making happens in a concerted fashion or concerted manner, right. So, you can see the bond will be made here, same time your bond can be broken. So, both happens very concerted, okay, and it is simultaneous. Hmm? That is the first, first thing about pericyclic reaction. The second part is that your pericyclic reaction goes to a cyclic transition state. And the third is that you will not observe no distinct intermediate can be observed. These are the three important things which you know about pericyclic reaction. So, that is how you can define pericyclic reaction. First point you say that bond breaking and bond making happens in a concerted fashion. The second point you saw that it goes to a cyclic transition state. Finally, you say you cannot observe any distinct intermediate in this reaction, okay. That is a very formal definition of pericyclic reactions, okay. Now, we will see classification of pericyclic reactions.
So, based on Woodward, uh, pericyclic reactions can be broadly classified in five major reactions are there. Okay, five major and two are minor, which you can incorporate in uh, pericyclic. But if you say broadly, they are five major classes. Okay, uh, one is your electrocyclic reactions. very important class where you study about your con rotatory and this rotatory ring opening and uh, ring closure okay that's very important there and then you study about your cyclo addition and same way you study your cyclo reversion reactions important class of your pericyclic Another you can think about is your sigma tropic reactions. Okay. And you have your group transfer reactions. Then you have your stereotropic reactions. These are your major five classes which you see in pericyclic. Electrocyclic, where you study your con and this, right? Ring opening and ring closure. Cyclo addition reactions, you study your uh, famous 2 plus 2, then you study your 4 plus 2, deal sadder reactions. Uh, retro deal sadder where you study about cyclo reversion reactions right uh, sigma tropic you study about your 1 comma n that is your hydrogen shift and carbon shifts methyl shift then you study your cope clayson okay all these things in sigma tropic you have group transfer reactions kiliotropic reactions where you, are, you study with your sulfur oxides reactions and then <coughs> the two other minor which you can think about. It is your in and retro in. See, some people put this in and retro in reaction inside your group transfer reactions, but they, they have a separate class in and retro in reactions which you can study. Another is your co octet reactions. So, <coughs> basically that means we have to study for the seven type of reactions. Okay. So, what we will be doing is that we will be spending time on each segment of reactions. We will study in detail. Okay. We start um, sigma tropic, we will study in detail all the reactions involved in that, then we will move one by one and finish it off. Okay. These are the seven reactions which we are going to uh, see in this next coming classes. Okay. These are the classification. See, there are some methods by which you understand or you analyze pericyclic reactions by theoretically or by using orbital pictures, right? So, there are three methods by which you methods of Three methods you use to understand pericyclic reactions. Uh, one is your your study this orbital symmetry correlation method. Any idea who did this? Huh? Okal and uh, another. Woodward and Hoffman. Hmm? 
their contribution was great on orbital Woodward and Hoffman. Yeah, of course, was there. orbital symmetry. Then any other which you remember? Mobius, Mobius very good. That is totally. Oh, another is this the this frontier orbital method, right? Is this very important one? Frontier orbital FMO, mm -hmm. hmm? which you use this molecular orbital theory, done by. Okay, right. But this Mobius, all this comes under this theory, transition state aromaticity method. But actually, this was started by uh, your any idea who, sta who did more major contribution on this? Big names. Evans, Dewar and Zimmerman. Okay. So, it is better to know the people who are contributed on this particular areas. Ne? Any any chemistry if you take you better know the people, ne? the contributors. So, so you can use these three methods like orbital symmetry correlation, FMO and your transition state aromaticity to understand your pericyclic reactions. Okay. Yeah. Before getting in detail pericyclic reaction, just uh, I know that you guys know about all these things, but uh, I want to just uh, brush your uh, uh, molecular orbital pictures just for ethylene, butadiene, and cyclo or heptatriene. Okay, just to brush it because I know that you have studied in detail in in other courses. Huh? Just have a refresh. Just see molecular orbitals of ethylene, butadiene, heptatriene. See, ethylene is, you guys have studied it, it is not. Heptatriene, hexatriene, sorry. Hexa, right? Hexatriene. Um, so, you know ethylene, if I say it is bonding and um, should be this one and it should be the HOMO, right? Highest occupied molecular orbital. Hmm? This should be your antibonding side and this will be your LUMO. Um, if you see the face of ethylene, this will you get this face, right, which you have studied, and in antibonding, it will be reverse of it. You can build your um, butadiene based on this, right. Um, you can call this as pi 1 and pi 2. See, I want you guys to at least draw this. I have studied it, it is fine, but so you can take your ethylene, you can have this combination, same phase combination, okay. Then you can get this ethylene with the same phase, okay, or you can have the phase the different way, okay. Then you get 
so down wire right so you can build up problem so it is pi 1 and pi 2 same way you can make this Same way you can <coughs> combine these two faces like this is one, okay. Then you can take this face and combine it. One another, this will be always see the easy, um, right? Uh, pi 3 and pi 4. Nice to uh, slowly you can build up like this. Okay, uh, if you want to draw x axis train, can you draw x axis train uh, like train system, x axis train system, where you have like See when we see book, we just visually we see that and we leave it. Okay, when you draw it, is nice. So what you do? How you build up this system? You can take this bonding with pi one. You end up this one your pi 1 system you can take this bonding and you can do with your pi 2 you end up with pi 3 right you mix this two you end up pi 1 you mix this two you end up with pi 3 okay that's how you build up so if i just so this all will be in the same phase because of this two mixing okay if i make mix pi 1 of my ethylene and pi 2 of butadiene just see that get my pi 3 okay the pi 2 system mostly i have this type of nodes of symmetrical ne, which you have studied so it will be like three faces will be up and your three faces will be down of your pi 2 if you keep like this okay that's how you build your pi 2 okay so pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 now can you draw for your pi 4 pi 5 pi 6 same idea so Now, once you know this, then it is nice after this you can get into your pericyclic. I know that you guys know it, but just I can say this my pi 4, okay, where you have this combinations, right? Down, now my down, up, then I take this one and this one, this pi 4, then I can have this combinations, this will be pi 6, okay. I will draw the pi 4, but this pi 6 will be. Okay, because this is a major you are going to talk and your pi 6, pi 5, 
since I don't have space, I'm drawing. Let also have a type of that you have an opposite type of symmetry, same way down and up. That's your pi phi. Okay, so you can just by combining you can build up your systems. Okay, it doesn't need that uh, you have to memorize all these things. Just by combinations, how to at combine and just slowly you can build up your ethylene glutadiene triene systems, etc. I hope that you do even for octa tetrene. You can you can build it up. Okay, so that's fine about your molecular orbital. So what we are going to learn from this, what it going to tell you. When you have a pericyclic reactions, what it tells you basically? See, when you want to analyze a pericyclic reaction, okay, first point is that you analyze analysis of basically, okay, sorry, homo of one component with lumo of another component that is two you use whenever you see your immediately when you see a reaction you consider the homo and the lumo okay, and see whether. So, if homo and lumo okay, are like favored that means their phases are same which you which in detail I will tell you the homo and lumo. is favored orbitally. Okay. I will explain you in detail what is favored orbitally. Then the then you say the pericyclic reaction proceeds. Okay. That you can understand. The third point you can understand is that the energy gap of homo and lumo have influence on the rate of the reaction. Most of the time if you see that the energy gap between your homo and lumo is very small, the reaction process is very fast. Okay. So, these are the three things which you can understand like by seeing your orbital. When, uh, when you are given a pericyclic reaction, please see the homo and lumo of the both the components and see whether they are orbitally favored. If they are orbitally favored, reaction goes. If the gap is very small, then the reaction process is very fast. Okay. Now, uh, we will get. So, this is the broad introduction of your pericyclic reactions. Okay. Now, we will take individual reactions and see in detail. Since you guys have studied um, yes, uh, the energy gap of your homo and lumo have influence on the rate of the reaction. Okay, I uh, know that uh, the undergraduates are where you have studied more in detail about electrocyclic reactions. Okay, you have studied also something about your cycloadditions. I have not seen you guys study uh, sigma tropic reactions in detail. Just to have, have a glance. So what I thought, like I will first take sigma tropic reactions. Okay, we study in detail. Anyhow, we are going to cover these other cycloadditions and electrocyclic. But I thought, like first I will concentrate on sigma tropic. Hmm? Then we will move slowly from there. Okay. So to start with reactions, we'll start our sigma tropic reactions. So sigma tropic reactions <coughs> are broadly classified into two groups. Okay. One you call them as one comma n sigma tropic rearrangement and 
another you can call them as n comma m sigma tropic rearrangement. So that is how you can broadly classify them. So, what is basically 1 comma n we are talking about? See, if I have a reaction, I just say this is R is a residue. Okay. Um, once I heat this reaction, I will number it 1, 2, 3. This 1 okay, stands for the initial position of your R. Okay. So, what happens then? You get a product like this. Okay. So, now this residue are, has moved across the pi system hmm, and reached a portion like 3 in this case. So, that is your n. Okay. So, it can be called as then 1 comma 3 sigma tropic shift. Okay. That is how you call them 1 comma 3 sigma tropic shift. See in this 1 comma 3, 1 is your initial okay, where the r is that you always number as 1 and then where it has finally moved that you call as the n. Okay. It can be 3, 5, 7 whatever it is. See, uh, in, in this R most of the time you are going to discuss two, okay. one you are going to discuss hydrogen, okay. you call them then 1 comma 3 hydrogen shift if the R is hydrogen okay. or you discuss with your carbon. These are the most uh, you see, either you see an hydrogen shift or you see a carbon shift or it is methyl or whatever carbon shift. These are the two big class of your 1n. So, sigma tropic classified as 1n and n, n comma m and in 1n I can further classify them as 1 comma n hydrogen shift as well as 1 comma n carbon shift. Okay. So, what is this n comma m? So, I have a system 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, in this case, if you see it is your sigma bond has been moved across your pi system. Okay. So, initially your sigma bond which is doing the reaction that you call as 1 1 okay. and where it has finally reached. Okay. In this case it has went to 3 in one side and another side also it went to 3. Okay. Oh, double bond is there. Okay. So, this is then what system it is? Your n is 3, your m is also 3 in this case. So, you call it as 3 comma 3. Okay. There are, but there are many examples of 2 comma 3. Any example of 2 comma 3 which you know? 2 comma 3 reactions. Wagner Murrow is 1 comma 2. Claisen is 3 comma 3, 5 comma 1 comma 4. You have all your elite chemistry, sulfur elides, okay. all your elite chemistry goes by 2 comma 3 sigma tropic shift. Okay. Yeah, we will see that. So, there are, so you have to find out where the new bond is moved. Okay. Um, in this case, it is 3 and 3. So, your n is 3 and m is 3. If it is 2 and 3, yes, it becomes 2 comma 3. Sigma tropic shift. So, these are the three parts which we are going to study in sigma tropic. First, we will be discussing about hydrogen shift okay, in detail, then we will move to carbon 1 comma n carbon and then we will study uh, n comma m sigma tropic shift. Clear? Hmm? Okay. 
So, we will start then with 1 comma n as it is shifting. Okay. First, we will see the simple reactions, very simple general reactions, then we go in simple reactions like just what I have said now. See, uh, when you write pericyclic reaction, you write both the ways because it can happen, right. So, I number it 1, 2, 3. Is, see the electron push because that is addition. So, how you uh, represent that? You just write 1 comma 3, you can write hydrogen shift, small h it also works 1 comma 3 hydrogen shift. All people write 1 comma 3 bracket hydrogen h, okay? way of writing it. <coughs> now, it is little bit different from your electrocyclic when you count the pi system, 4 n rules and 4 n plus 2 rules which you do in electrocyclic. In this case, it is a little bit different. What you do is that you consider how many electrons are involved in this reaction, that is how you consider. See 2 pi electrons okay, as well as 2 sigma electrons. So, you have now 4 electron system, basically this is 4 electron system. Now. Somewhere you get lost when you go to electrocyclic and this just you see the pi system. Here you have to see the pi system and your okay. sigma system. So, you see now it is as a 4 electron system. Okay. So, when you apply your Woodward Hoffman rule, then you apply with this electrons. Hmm? So, this will be your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this will be your 1, 5 <coughs> hydrogen shift and basically it will be 6 electron system. Right, and one more is which we will be discussing. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, it is 1 7 hydrogen shift. So, it is 8 electron system. Right. So, uh, reaction wise, now you know uh, how to number it and uh, how to represent these guys and how much electron system it is involved. Right. Any doubt on this? Clear. Now, I will bring a small additional uh, point into this reaction. Okay. That is, if I take a system, this is very simple. Okay. If you just remember, if, you, if I take a system like this, general representation. Okay. This is your hydrogen. Now, if you, you know, if I hit this reaction, it will happen what? 1, 5. Okay. Um, but once your hydrogen moves to C and D, 
it is going to generate a type of chiral carbon. Okay. Then the stereochemistry comes into picture, right? So it can be two way. One it can be R or it can be S, right? So if I can be like this okay not nothing so you will see this is so you have a c d hydrogen and this okay now <coughs> in one case if you see your hydrogen okay <coughs> as went to the same phase another case if you see the hydrogen as we went down, okay, in a opposite phase, right? It has a sort of inversion has been taken place. In one case, it has in a same phase. So that you call as suprafacial, where your hydrogen went in the same phase without disturbing. Another case you call them as an antrafacial. See, slowly bringing a stereochemistry into this shift that is all. First you know how to do your hydrogen shifts. Okay, You know what is 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 7, how to label them, how to push your electrons, how many electrons are involved. Now I am bringing one more concept of stereochemistry. If your hydrogen moves without changing the phase, okay, then you say suprafacially. If there is an inversion, then you say antrafacially. Clear? You can, you can visualize this even with the uh, orbitals. Uh, I will just show how how you can see this in orbital way. If I want to draw superficial, okay. okay so my R and R prime, and this is my hydrogen which I am talking about. Okay. Now this we want to think about superficial one. Okay, how your state should look. Because this has moved like this, so it will be R R prime. Okay. Then basically it can revert back giving this. So this can become now without your hydrogen. You can have a system of Yeah, if it is, yeah, it is nice that you R, R prime. Okay. Then you have this one, which will be having small. Right, so superficially looks to be easy to draw back. Just concentrate on that R and R prime also. Okay, that also tells like what phase it goes on. Can you draw now antrafacial? Any idea? Can uh, I will just give you the picture.
okay most of the time if this r should be in the okay have an hydrogen here see antifacial means your orbital will be in opposite thing so, now can you think how to draw this can you think this this way you, how the antifacial looks how this guys can book so Now, I want your r, this r and r prime to be, because it has turned like this, right. So, your r prime will be on this and your r will be here, right. I just turned this. Now, now just because See, uh, I think when you move across, you keep your R and R prime understanding, okay, because that will guide you. Mm? And even I have seen people drawing like uh, even if this hydrogen nucleus, this will be big and symmetrical, okay, it does not work like that. Ne? When you have an hydrogen system, you have a smaller lobe across that you have studied it. So, that is how you can visualize your supraficial and antifacial, okay, or by orbital if you want. So, based on this orbital picture, Woodward and Hoffman formulated a type of rule, right. Um, finish. Yeah. This interaction. this one. See, I want to take this up. Na? Oh, this line you are talking about. One. Yeah, yeah it should be in this, because it, this is connected. Na? This is only to say that it is connected. It is an end system. It is not like I am talking about any phase in this line. Yeah, connected. Just a bond system. Not the phase. I am not talking about the phase. That is good. So, what your Woodward Hoffman rule says about the system type of for one n system, okay. If you have a four n system, I am talking about the electrons, okay, four n and four n plus two electrons where you fit in. So, you have heating and you have a photolysis case, okay. So, four n system basically on heating gives you antifacial okay and light it should be always it's other way around suprafacial and this is suprafacial and this is your antifacial okay that means what i say is that uh, I, what is your uh, 1 5 1 5 is 6 electron system right yeah. so 6 electron system will fit in this rule hmm? 4 and plus 2 yeah then it is suprafacial heating when it is light, light it will be under okay. So, like that you can fit your rules. So, 
it exactly works only uh, one case it does not work this one uh, it is your 1 3 shift map there is something you have to learn about your 1 3 hydrogen shift fine. So, so what I will do that that exceptional case um, or that 1 3 hydrogen shift we will see in this class ok. I will teach you why it does not fit in it, it fits, but um, you guys know that 1 3 hydrogen shift on heating does not take place ok. Uh, if you heat uh, you cannot see you most of the time you are not observing any 1 3 hydrogen shift that we will see in this class why it is not happening ok. Then we will see your 1 3 carbon shift and we will do the problems then we will move to your n comma m clear hmm? ok. So, I will stop the class with this.